Today on Houston Life, if you're looking to add a new puppy to your family, find out which are the best dog breeds to fit your lifestyle. Plus, a local dietitian shares her journey with type 1 diabetes and healthy recipes to help balance blood sugars. And KPRC2 has teamed up with Houston Habitat for Humanity to help one local family move into their new home. Joe Sam has that on the latest and how you can help out. And forget Scranton, Houston has a brand new office branch. It's called Dunder Mufflin, a new pop-up downtown. We're going to show you inside all about it. All that and more happening today on Houston Life. <laughs> From Studio B at KPRC Channel 2, Houston Life starts now. Well, welcome to Houston Life. Welcome to Friday. Hey, and Mavis. welcome to Jonathan we Martinez. Yes, I change. know. Yeah, well, welcome. Fun. You're in for Derek today. I'm in for Derek today. And this is the first time in the hot seat. I mean, I uh, mean, co-hosting. I, I know hot seat. I believe that to be the hot seat. <laughs> so I've been asked several times to do it. And for whatever reason, the schedule's never worked out. And this go round kind of got suckered into it. And I'm like, yeah, I'll oh, what? Into it. No, I'm just no, kidding. I, but I've wanted to. I've wanted to right. for so long and finally got the opportunity to. So I'm like, all right, let's do it. So, but I do believe it's the hot seat. It's totally different different than you. Right. I mean, I when I right made now. the transition to, it is a little strange. And yeah. we've talked to like a lot about that here on the set with Derek and I, because, mm -hmm. you know, we're so used to such a scripted Ooh, show yeah. and looking for scripts. The and words are, you know, there's nothing. He's <laughs> Jonathan said, there, there's no words. She, where is she everything? Down and she's like, okay, this is where you go. And, and there you go. And you're on your way. And I'm like, okay. All right. I know so. it's a little nerve wracking, no, but fine. you're going to be great. I, we enjoy watching you on the weekends and it. you've been here since when? 2015. Okay. So about five and a half, six years. Years now. Time flies. It's it so crazy. So yeah. I know, I know. And I think we we may have worked together for like a week and then I and left then in it. 2015. I think that yeah. was it. We're gonna get to know you though then, really well, but we gotta talk about something that is basically like taken over the internet, the new meme, right? It's the gift that keeps on giving. Right? It's giving me life. Hours. It really is. Like We're talking about, in case you guys missed it, you know, the Bernie Sanders, the inauguration, <laughs> how he showed up in these gloves. These gloves were made mm -hmm. from, the mittens were made from a woman by the name of Jen Ellis. She's a teacher in Essex Junk Junction, Vermont. She gave those gloves, those mittens to Bernie about two years ago and was really surprised that he started wearing them on the campaign trail. And they're uh, made from recycled and repurposed wood. Uh, wool sweaters. I didn't know that. I, I know. And, you know, the meme of him just sitting there has basically taken this. Classic. It is classic. So classic now. This is the one that made me think of That's you. That's the good one right there. I hilarious. I love that. And over in Galveston, of course, you're a Galveston boy. Yeah, B-O-I. Yeah. And, um, but this is like taking over the internet. I think I have one too, right? Oh, there's oh. Derek and I in class. <laughs> it's like sort of like, you know, taking a quiz on a Friday. Have you like, you know. Bernie made the appearance. There. Yeah. And then Orlando and I. You know, this is just a little dancing. He was there. Okay, let's see. In the background there with Derek right there. <laughs> Isn't that great? It really is. And Lauren and I just showering Bernie there. And I think we have one more. Do we have okay, one more? let's see. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, that's good stuff. Isn't right that there. good? Hilarious. Look at Sion Sai Ai. She's like, what's happening? Oh, look, Bernie in the, the newsroom. Uh, and, and then, <laughs> take a look at the, the little uh, mask there. I didn't realize it was upside down, but, you know, Bernie should have given me the heads up. I that, know. That Channel 2 KPRC was upside down. It's such the gift that keeps on giving. It, it makes really me is. giggle. Yeah. It's it, it, all it, over. There's even one for, like, Sex in the City, and they said we found the, the Kim Cattrall replacement, and it's nice. Bernie. Nice, it's him. Well, I saw the Last Supper. Uh, there's a Where's Waldo running around. Oh, to this day, I've still not been able to find him because it's a really massive really? picture and he's in there somewhere and, oh and i've my seen it I'm like, no he's not in there because i've looked for 10 minutes still can't find him but evidently he's in there if you okay. can find him in the where's waldo let us know and let's find out where seriously <laughs> okay so let's get to know you a little yes. bit more as we said you're a boi born on the island on the island and your whole family's from there right pretty much everybody and everybody's still there in between galveston and texas city a couple in lamarck but uh, yeah i'm born and raised on the island that's me my mom and my dad right there oh way back i'm not gonna say how far back <laughs> And that right there is probably my favorite picture. That's my mom's favorite picture as well. Um, that's going to be my grandmother's restaurant there. We had a couple of restaurants on the island, so they opened up theirs. Okay. And we opened up, my parents opened up ours in 61st and Herds, and then we had another one in Texas City, uh, and it was around for several years, so it was something that I grew up doing. Uh, that was my dad there. He worked for the Sheriff's Department, and in fact, this was 96 in the Olympics. We went out there because we had a food booth. Uh, we were doing the fajitas and burritos and everything out there. Really? So it was kind of in conjunction with the restaurant, yeah, but that was a big trip for us, and we made it out there to Atlanta 
That's my mom there with her blonde hair. Oh, it's love any it. It's given day of the week, it's a different color. Well, that's no. what we do. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my brothers, and that's my extended family. That's my grandmother there, my, oh. my nieces, my nephews. Uh, and yeah, that, that's the whole bunch. That was Thanksgiving, I believe, two years ago, a year and a half ago. That is so great. And I love that because I saw this picture at Year of End Credits that we run every, all, uh, every year mm -hmm. where the, all the employees get to showcase their family in like a fun picture. Yeah. Um, but I noticed that your brother there is wearing a Chicago Bears jersey, Brian Urlacher. Which one was it? Can we bring it back up again? Which brother was it? I don't know. Brian Urlacher. That's a Bears jersey. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, he's, a, he's a big, yeah, he's a big Chicago. He's a Cubs fan as well. And okay. I, I hold that against him. I think Growing up, I was also a Cubs fan, too. I still kind of am, but obviously not before an Astros fan. Right. So, yeah, he, he likes the Bears and that all is, Chicago. That's why I, I walked by and I saw that picture Caught and I said, eye. i, I got to ask Jonathan about <laughs> that. You don't see, you see a lot of Urlacher jerseys, just not around here. Sure. And so gotta, I thought it was pretty cool that he had it on. amongst us. I wouldn't be caught alive and in public <laughs> with him with that jersey on. So <laughs> I remember when the Texans um, played an exhibition game mm -hmm. with the Bears and they were here. I was pregnant. I can't remember which boy it was, either one of the two, sure. obviously. And... Um, um, I wore my Bears, my Bears jersey Ooh. to that game. That it was over? fun, mm -hmm. you know. The, the tech, the, it's fun. It's uh -huh. good stuff because we're not we're not ugly fans, you no, know. No, no, no. That you... was the only time I wore it, <laughs> you know. Did so you get any side it's an ex no? exhibition game. It's early <laughs> season, kind of sort of. <laughs> I know, but it's good <laughs> stuff. That's great. Yeah, I love seeing fun. all of your family and everything. That's really cool. And what I think is great too. How many marathons? Have, are, are you a marathoner or are you uh, a halfer? So no, I'm a marathoner, and, and I wasn't always a runner. So I started running just as I. I was leaving Arkansas and got that runner's high. Okay. Like, because I didn't have family in Arkansas, but everybody who's on the course, you become family. They cheer you on, fell in love with it. It was a super good runner's high. And I'm like, okay, I'm hooked. That was a half marathon that I did. And I was like, there's no way I can build up to a full. Did the first full. I'm like, oh, this is even a higher high than that one was. Yeah. So I, uh, I did, I want to say two or three marathons in a year and a half to two years ago. I decided that I was going to run a marathon a month for the entire year. And I got up to my sixth one. And at this point, I was having to go to different parts of the country. Okay. Um, got up to the sixth one out in San Francisco. And the week before, I messed up my leg. And, and I'm oh. like, oh, no. So I had gotten halfway to that point. Yeah. And, and it was for me just overdoing it. I played around sure. golf with my buddies and then went to Memorial for one loop. And I'm like, oh, I'll do another loop. And I was in my fourth mile. And something popped. And I'm like, oh. I didn't I go to know. the doctor. My resident doctor here in house is Justin Stapleton. Oh, he also yeah. Runs. He's a good doctor. So I always ask. <laughs> him, I'm like, hey, it popped, but it doesn't hurt. Can I stay? He's like, buddy, stay off. lay off of it. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, my so gosh. I well, I think it's great. Day. I'm only half crazy. I've only done half marathons, oh, but um, one day maybe I will. But I think it's really incredible it's um, that you run. I, get, I solve a lot of the world's problems on my runs, you know? <laughs> yeah. it just It's a good thing hitting the pavement. Yeah, decompression. Um, so one of the things about sitting in the hot seat, mm -hmm. you know, co-hosting here. We sure. like to have a lot of fun on Houston Life. It's good stuff, though. And we know that you're like a big movie buff and of course, you're from the island, so yes. we're going to play um, a game. It's called Movie Emojis Island Edition. Hello. Okay, we're going to show a series of emojis that, when combined, are the title of an island-centric movie. Okay. Now, we have bells. You have a bell there the bell uh, under here, so we can bring okay. that up. You can ring in if you think that you know the title of the movie. However, okay. if you say the wrong title, we can steal. So, okay. like, if I say the wrong title and you think you know what it is, you can steal it for the win. Okay. Okay? You. Okay. All right, let's get started. Let's we have do the first. Does your bell work? Okay. Bell works. Great. Right. Right. Okay. Ready for the first one. So, we have a. Uh, you know what it is? Waterworld? Is it, is it wrong? No. Oh, my gosh. I have no idea. No. This is very bad. Is it. Um, it's a circle plus a whale? I thought that. The... Is it a whale or a wave? But I don't know. A globe and that's a wave. Title? Uh, no. What? Wonder World? What did you say? I said Water World. The oh Kevin yeah. Movie, was it? I don't know. What I is it? It's a globe. Oh, Blue oh, Lagoon. Blue Lagoon. Oh, oh wow, you guys that. are good. We're terrible. Uh -oh. Okay, what's the next one? <laughs> that's a. Is that a, a treasure chess? chess? Treasure chest? An island. Okay, Treasure Island. Oh, that, oh good like, job. Hey, no, I'm terrible at this, Jonathan. Well, this is really bad. Jurassic Park. Am I supposed to ring? Oh, can I steal? Or yeah, you can. Okay. Jurassic Park? What? Wait a minute. That's just what I said. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Jurassic World? Uh, I have no idea. Is that a volcano at the back? Yeah. 
Oh, Jurassic Island. Is that a movie? I think we should get credit for that. That's that's a half a point. At least I should. You stole my answer. Wait a minute. That's <laughs> half and half. It's worth one point for both. Okay, do we have another one? Okay. Part. Mm, I got the bell. Parts of did. the Caribbean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you got it. Nailed it. Okay, what's the next it? one? Last one. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, I can't think of the name. The Tom Hanks movie. The Tom Hanks movie. I can't think of the name of it, though. Uh, what is it name? Everybody at home is yelling is at the it? TV. Like, how do you not know? Uh, Stranded? Is that, is that, no, no, no. no. Um, uh, what is it? Oh, what gosh. What's the volleyball's name? Uh, Will, Wilson is a volleyball's name. Yeah. What's the name of the movie, though? <laughs> We're not going to get it. What is it? Castaway. That, so that's the gesture you were doing. He was doing a castaway. Yeah. Okay. We knew what it was. Oh, you won. I won. I'm so bad. By like a half a point, though. It's so, it a you know, I, if this was music, I think I would have done a little bit better. I'm really bad with movies. Yeah. Clearly. Well, I'm good with movies, but I, I couldn't have to, like that. We should have known what Castaway Are was. Are you binging oh. anything right now? I just wrapped up Shit's Creek, and I didn't realize it was the last season. Nobody warned me about that. Where have you been living? I, under a rock, apparently. A really big rock. Just re-watch re it again. It's so, so good. good. I wasn't ready for the range of emotions I that I was going to go through. I thought they were filming another one. No, I think that was it. Unless really? More? I that's thought there was it, another. No. Let's hold on to that. I thought no, there was another. That's it. Okay. All right. So that was fun. Still more, yeah, to, it was. more to come, too. And coming up, you know, from living la vida loca to beating quarantine boredom, oh, good old Ricky Martin's debuting a new look on social media. Plus, calling all fans of The Office, a new pop up <laughs> bar inspired by the hit show recently opening up its doors downtown. And our Lauren Kelly is taking us <laughs> inside, answering calls to Houston Life is back in just two minutes. It's a real thing, y'all, right? And from haircuts to DIY projects, even bad wallpaper, sometimes you need a new way to stay busy. Have you seen this? I love Ricky Martin. Yeah, he's a great singer. Great singer, yeah. good to look at. Ricky Martin has a solution, and he says, when bored, bleach. Huh. The singer-songwriter shared a picture on Instagram of his newly bleached blonde beard. And it already has some, like, 700,000 likes. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure one of those were yours, as you maybe, were saying. Maybe a couple. I, you know, I don't <laughs> know. Like, I, it's not... It's not for everybody, I guess. Right. Look, but Here's he's the rocking thing. it though. At quick glance, doesn't he kind of look like a young Arnold Schwarzenegger? Like you know very what? That's quick. That's a good point. Just a yeah, just a boom boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. He does. So I mean, it, it's it, a talker. It, it's a good look for him. <laughs> wouldn't work if I were to let this stubble and, and bleach. It wouldn't be a good thing at all. No. <laughs> so it, it works for some people, but yeah, good for him though. Looks I fun. know. Yeah. yeah. Well, we do want to hear from you. Head over to the Houston Life TV Facebook page and share. The worst decision you ever made out of boredom. Out of sheer boredom. Yeah, there's some pretty good answers on mm -hmm. there already, so some good stuff. And yep. speaking of good hair and stuff, you mm -hmm. have really good hair. Uh, I don't know about you that. You do. You have I good don't hair. I about that. Well, Lauren Kelly's got some good hair, too. She's got too. even better hair, as well. Yeah, Houston's newest oh. pop-up bar, inspired by The Office, just recently opening up its doors, and guests can expect food and drinks, of course, inspired by the TV show, as well as office karaoke, Dunvey Awards, and plenty of photo ops, as well. Oh, absolutely. Lauren Kelly, you're getting comfortable down there. I sure am, guys. This is one of my all-time favorite shows. I know I can speak on behalf of Houston when I say that because we can probably quote episode after episode. And this is our good friend Asha Holloway, who is the creator of Dunder Mupplin, yes. which is downtown at 7-Eleven May. Now, Asha, we had you with the Harry Potter yes. Muggleless Bar, yes. the Jingled Up Bar. Yes. And now you moved on to the next craze, yes. the office. Yes. What made you choose The Office? You know, with um, The Office ending on December 31st and leaving Netflix and going over to Peacock, I figured, my staff and I figured, why not go ahead and pay homage to the amazing show oh. and start the new year <laughs> off with an absolute bang, and we're so, so excited. We're just going to take a little walk through yeah, the upstairs here. Sure. Behind us is the classic episode where Dwight and Michael think that they are fighter, yes. fighting each other and they're stronger than the other, which you can actually come and punch those guys. Yes. But as you walk through, there's so many photo ops that you can yes. take, and this is what you're so good at. Yes. You're so good at getting Michael's desk yes. all set up perfectly. Yes. If you read some of these notes, it's direct quotes from the show. And then the most notorious desk that I know Everybody's gonna Everyone recognize. Looks for. Come on over. 
here <laughs> is Pam's desk. Yes. You know, she sits at the front of the office yes, in she Scranton. Does. But here at Dunder Muplin, she kind of greets everybody from up the stairs. Yes. So all of these details, Asha, you did a great job. Thank you. And so people can have trivia. They yes. can wear costumes here. That's yes. all some of the fun. Yes. And then there's also a drink menu. Yes. There's some food on yes. that menu, which you don't go anywhere. You guys don't go anywhere because we're going to get that all to you coming up in just a little while. That Kevin Chili, I'm going to get my hands in some of that, Asha. Also, the world's best boss. Hey, Courtney and Jonathan, I'm going to send it back to you guys now. <laughs> Speaking of, all right, Lauren, thanks so much. Can't wait to see more a little bit later on in the show. And when we come back looking for a new four-legged friend in your home, you should find out which breed best fits your lifestyle. A local dog trainer has tips on the pup who's perfect for you. Very nice. So Plus, cute. we will check in with Joe Sam, who's live at the Houston Habitat for Humanity Build this afternoon. We'll see how it's all coming along when Houston Life returns in a moment. Well, welcome back. Okay, if you're thinking about adding a new puppy to your family, you know, it's important to consider what dog breed best fits your lifestyle. There's a lot of breeds out there. Stephanie Bennett, owner of Believe in Dog Training, recently shared with Derek some insight on a guide towards you, uh, guiding you towards the right fit, that is. <laughs> When it comes to things we should be considering, if we are having this conversation about adding a dog, I swear Brandon and I talk about it every single <laughs> night, should we get a dog, should we adopt a dog, uh, lifestyle is at the top of your list, is that right? It is. I think that it's very, very important to consider your lifestyle before you decide on any kind of breed, because the fact is that there are just dog breeds that are more high maintenance than others. And obviously, dog breeds that have a much higher energy level than others, it's really important to consider that stuff. Oh my gosh, I could look at puppy video all day long, okay, but I did hear every word you just said. So a lot of folks, maybe they go out and they choose a dog that really looks cute, right? But also the temperament of a dog is really what we should be looking for, right? Right. I beg people to, it's awesome, I and mean, we want cute puppies and beautiful puppies and dogs and all of that, but it's so, so important to really choose, really consider their temperament and their energy level first and then looks after that. And I feel like we finally got into a place where we can all agree that mutts, a mixed breed, these are beneficial for a lot of reasons. So many things. I mean, there's just endless amounts of one of a kind mixed breeds that can be fantastic companions and pets and that can match any lifestyle. So there's so many to choose from. Oftentimes they've been living with the foster family or the rescue organization, and they can give us a lot of information about what that dog's temperament is and their energy level. So we really have a good idea before we actually adopt a dog. As our, you know, our beautiful text has shown us, uh, they uh, mixed breeds are sometimes the best. Let's talk about some of your picks. Uh, if there's a family out there with small children, there's a list of breeds you actually recommend. Yes, so uh, I love a, uh, for the small children, I love a Havanese, uh, a Golden Retriever, a Poodle, a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel and a Collie are all very good choices for families with small children. Oh my goodness, they have such a great temperament as well. Nothing like a Golden Retriever puppy oh, as, yeah, baby. as well. And uh, I mean, puppies, again, any, any puppy is going to have a lot of energy, so that's always something to consider as well, right? That's really, really important. We call it the post-puppy panic. Um, the <laughs> puppies are always, no matter what, no matter how great they're going to be as an adult, puppies are 24-7 kind of a gig. It's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And then, not only that, you get teenager after that. And when you get teenager, adolescence is not a, you know, as calm time for any species. Uh, so you got to go through that as well. Uh, but uh, in general, these breeds are very good for these kind of families. But you got to get through the puppy and the adolescent. The teenager phase, even with dogs, it is a real thing. Let's talk about seniors. There are some breeds that, that you recommend for seniors out there who are maybe looking for a companion animal, and the Maltese is on your list. The Maltese, very good. Lauren Kelly has a Maltese. Uh, Pomeranians, uh, Yorkshire Terriers, Shih Tzus, and a Bichon Frise. All really good choices for seniors. Oh, and they are all so cute. I love every single breed on that list. Young mm -hmm. active singles are couples. There's there's a breed on here. Is it called a Vizsla? A Vizsla. A uh -huh. Vizsla, okay. Can you see a Vizsla before? It looks almost like a red Weimaraner. Okay. Yeah, 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 Vizsla. And they're just the cutest, sweetest, very smart, but very high energy, bird dogs, right? So, uh, but they're really fun, really highly trainable. And then of course the Boxer. Uh, American Staffordshire Terrier, 
an Australian Shepherd, and Jack Russell Terrier. Super fun, active dogs that can do a lot, ready for adventure, ready to train, ready to learn. I swear those Jack Russell Terriers, they have springs in their legs. They can just jump and jump and jump. I have a big affinity for those guys. Before we let you go, families with older kids, I mean, if you have if you have a high schooler who wants to, you know, running cross country, labs are great dogs. Yes, indeed. Labrador Retrievers, of course, most popular breed in America. Beagles, soft-coated Wheaton Terriers, love those. Not as popular, but they're really great. A Bernese Mountain Dog, really great. And then a Bulldog, of course. Bulldogs are adorable. Stephanie Bennett, we miss you. And uh, again, thank mm -hmm. you for all your work with Tex. He is a perfectly trained little man, <laughs> thanks to you. Thank you so much. So nice to see you again, Derek. Great to see you. Hopefully we'll be able to have you in studio again very soon. Happy Hopefully. New Year. Fingers crossed. Thank you so much. And you can see a list with all of Stephanie's picks on our website, HoustonLife.tv. I love Stephanie Bennett. She yeah. always has some really great insight. And before we got Oscar, mm -hmm. she came over to our house, talked about the type of dog and yeah. what the commitment means with the boys. Sure. And, you know, Oscar, he's a golden doodle. So I think that kind of, she she named a couple of the, yeah. go, you know, Look golden retrievers guy. and poodles. Look at him. I know. Cute. He's lucky he's cute. He gets into a lot of trouble, <laughs> but he's still in that puppy stage. We've got a teenager almost. Yeah. So, you know, that adolescence phase. Look so that, that was guy. his birthday. In November, nice. he has the best 80s hair, yeah, you know? Yeah, all kinds of shaggy. And you, let's talk about Cooper. Dogs. I've got Cooper. He's part uh, with Schnauzer. Oh. That was a windy day, a very windy day there. He's part Schnauzer, so part cute. Terrier. I like to say part Tasmanian Devil, too, because he just goes bonkers. And I was kind of tricked. That was when we went into wa uh, Whataburger. Oh. And of course, I was ordering, but he was, like, all in the mix, too, to make sure I got him what he needed, which was, like, fries and a burger. And oh, like my that. gosh. Yeah, that is hilarious. Yeah, it was late night, and, and he usually doesn't ride with me, but that night. He knew I was going to, to grab that something is that I shouldn't so have been. That is so cute. Yeah, like, oh, I man. love that. Yeah, they're such great super. companions. They make us smile. Yeah. No, they're crazy 24-7. They are so crazy. we got to get our dogs together soon. Exactly. <laughs> little play date for sure. Okay, guys, coming up, the new cookbook with tasty recipes to help manage diabetes and follow a blood sugar-friendly diet. For now, let's go ahead and check back in with Joe Sam for a look at what he has coming up. Hey, Joe. Hey, hey guys, so as you can already see, we are inside of the Houston Habitat for Humanity build. I can already see a big flat screen TV right here. We're going to talk about what they're doing here for the build, how much work that they've done already, and much more. We're also going to get a check-in with KPRC for the news at 4 to see what's coming up. Houston Life will be back in just two minutes. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. I'm Courtney Savala, and it is almost 3.30. Almost there, 3.30. I'm Jonathan Martinez in for Derek Shore today. Happy to be here. I know, on this Friday, it's good to have you part it's of the show. Friday. First time co-hosting, so yeah. that's really fun. Okay, time now. We want to hear what you had to say about our viewer talker and our question of the day. We asked you to share the worst decision you ever made out of boredom, and we're going to start with Joe. His answer is one word. Marriage. Oh, Joe, I almost feel like I need a backstory there. Oh, that's what I was gonna say. If he's still married, he's in the doghouse now <laughs> because of that answer right there. <laughs> all right, and Caroline there says, I cut bangs and it didn't work, not at all, LOL. And oh. she's not the only one that, yeah, that cuts hair. The bang yeah. problem. <laughs> I know. Okay, so Suzanne writes in, reading the comment sections on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah, but sometimes they're really funny. Like there's yeah. a lot of funny people out there and mean, but you know. There you go. And lastly, we've got Rosa. I believe it was is it Susanna Rose. I think we had one. Yeah, one. Uh, getting go. a TikTok. Rose, I think getting a TikTok account. You know what? I don't even have a TikTok account, but since it came with the app, I oh. unfortunately go down the rabbit hole of yeah, I've, I'm in TikTok and I'm sucked in now. And I, listen, they're funny you, though. You want a time waster? Mm -hmm. Get on TikTok. That's all it is. I know. You look at the clock and it's all gone. I know. I don't know what I did out of boredom. I don't know if I have any bad decisions. Do you have one? I've cut my hair. Yeah, you cut your and hair. it's bad because my mom's a hairstylist and she immediately knows she'll see me during a live shot and she's like, "What were you thinking?" And, and, and then, you have good hair. Well, and then my you stylist do. is like, what did you do? And I'm like, well, I know. if you only look at it like this from the camera, you can't see can't it tell. when you turn to the side. Can't see the mullet. Oh, oh, they... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I'm yes, just kidding. You yes. have good hair. No. <laughs> All right. Well, let's check in now with Keith and Christine and Justin oh. for a look at what they have coming up for the news at 4. I can only imagine what kind of craziness mm -hmm. you three have gotten into. Yeah, yeah. but I want to get back to that guy, Joe. I hope he's not married now. I know. Because, yeah. uh, That's why I'm like, Joe, mm, I don't know. It's about to get real <laughs> yeah. exciting. Yeah. For him right. in case he is. Right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a guy that's just trying to save some money on a divorce lawyer. That's all that is, <laughs> right? Yes. No kidding. Yeah, I've made
made so many bad decisions, uh, <laughs> boredom, we because of boredom or otherwise. Yeah. yeah, you know, how do, can we get the next 30 minutes? Okay, maybe? I know. <laughs> Five Producers minutes are days. saying, rap, rap. <laughs> I'm sure mm. they are. All right. Mm. Yeah. Great to see you guys. Jonathan, great to see you on the Houston Life Set as well, my friend. Thanks. I was, gonna, I was just going to say, yeah, see, here's the thing, Courtney, that he won't tell you is that his mom secretly loves me more. <laughs> oh. I don't know if it's so much of a secret anymore. She's like, oh, yeah. And she'll compliment you before she compliments me as well. Bingo. And I'm like, really, Ma? Really? Come on. <laughs> oh, yeah. boy. Damn, the damn hierarchy. Damn. Yeah, that's, that's the way right. that it works. I love it. Yeah. All right, hey, let's do so it. Are, 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 are we going right? to love stuff. this weekend? Come do me. Let's do a little bit. <laughs> so it's getting better out there this afternoon. Notice we're actually getting some breaks in the clouds, which is kind of nice. Uh, but still, it's going to murky. It's going to stay murky, I should say. It will likely keep the roads damp. Not necessarily wet. Most of the rain has been moving out. But notice that the temperatures really haven't budged much. We're sitting in the mid to upper 60s. As you get towards Sugarland, they're at about 71 degrees. Same thing out towards Brenham. And for the most part, the winds will stay on the light side. Now, I know the fog has been been an issue the last couple of nights, especially down around the coast where it's just been socked in. It's a little better out there now. And notice we've still got some breaks in the clouds as you get off to the west. So we may be able to sneak this in, let's say, over the next three hours or so. So might even get some real nice looking sunsets tonight. But the worst of the rain, worst by meaning, you know, it was just an annoyance because it was light as it was moving over across the I-10 corridor. And that's about it. So otherwise, this is what we'll be looking at. The future cast as we take it through the rest of this evening should be a OK. So no problems if you are headed out tonight. Probably Probably won't need much of a coat either. Notice by tomorrow morning we'll sit in the 60s and as we get into the afternoon, guys, we'll get a few more breaks in the clouds and we'll keep it into the mid to upper 60s. So I think tomorrow's probably the day if you're going to go do something outside. Saturday, Sunday, we'll start to see a warm front move through. That's going to bring more of this annoyance showers back in for the back half of the weekend. We'll kind of break all that down and we'll actually see if we get some sunshine coming up here at 4 o'clock. We'll take a look at the 10-day forecast. Uh, it's the weekend and that's what really matters. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right, okay. Justin, thank you. All right. I'll look now at some of the other stories that we are covering for today. We told you about this story yesterday. A fired Harris County public health doctor accused of stealing doses of the coronavirus vaccine. Today, we are hearing from that doctor's attorney and his version of what happened. Plus, women have been making great strides when it comes to careers in science, technology, engineering, and math. But could the COVID-19 pandemic actually hurt their progress? We're going to be taking a closer look at this issue today at 4 o'clock. And finally, in case you have not heard, tonight's Mega Millions jackpot is up to $1 billion. Woo. Our Facebook question of the day is, how many tickets are you planning to buy tonight? I think uh, we, we might need to get some, some money together here to give you that. <laughs> uh, go to the KPRC2 Facebook page and let us know. We will share your answers ahead at 4 o'clock. One billion. Has it ever I been in? I never play, but when it's a billion or above, that's when we need to get you know, you, okay. you can't win if you don't play, you know? Exactly. You know exactly. What I, you know what I do with that billion, don't you? What's that? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm afraid really? that. Really? What do I do as a career? What? Make it rain! Make it rain! Dad jokes yeah. all around. Oh, He's dang. here all weekend. Dun, dun. That Very actually nice. makes me laugh. <laughs> all right, y'all. Mic Thanks drop so after that. We'll see you at four. Uh, you know, for many living with diabetes, cooking meals that are both tasty and nutritious can be very challenging. And our next guest is helping take the stress out of meal prepping with her very first book, The Easy Diabetes Cookbook. Joining us now is registered dietitian and founder of Milk and Honey Nutrition, also friend of the show, Mary Ellen Phipps. Great to see you and congratulations. Hi. I've got a copy of the cookbook right here. I'm so proud Yay. of you. <laughs> This is so Thank great. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Now, you were diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 5. What was that like for you as a child? Well, the, the funny part is I don't remember life without diabetes. I don't even remember. I have vague memories of being in the hospital, but all I've known is really having to make adjustments to food. And so as I got older and grew up and figured out what I wanted to do with my life, I, it became a passion to really help people, you know, remember you can have tasty food and it can still be good for you. Speaking about that, you've got this cookbook. I've done my finger through a couple of the pictures there. It looks really good. Talk to us about it and what's all in there. Yeah, so the goal of the cookbook was really to make life with diabetes easier for people. And that, that can mean different things. That means reducing stress in the kitchen and means enjoying your food again, because let's face it, we're happier when we get to eat food we really enjoy and like, um, and really helping people be confident in the choices they make in the kitchen. Uh, and so it's filled with dishes, and I kind of wanted to focus on dishes that maybe people with diabetes think they're that are off limits, or maybe they've been told they can't have. And so what I teach you how to do is what to add to your diet 
diet to really make these dishes diabetes friendly rather than what to take away from the diet. Because when we think about like restriction and cutting out foods, nobody has fun with that and nobody enjoys thinking about that. So we, instead we focus on, you know, how do we add healthy plant-based fats? How do we add protein? How do we add fiber? All these things that help balance blood sugars. And all of your recipes, Mary Ellen, I've made tons of them. You share them on the show. They look good. They taste good. My kids have loved some of them, too. So <laughs> let's talk about so I know. I mean, everything in the book, they, it looks fabulous from smoothies to, you know, 15 minute meals. Everything is very simple. You have some stuff there on display. And let's talk through some of the dishes that you have there. Yes, yeah, so these are some of my favorite recipes. They're all good, but these are especially my favorite. So we've got a Mediterranean pasta salad because it was important for me to show people with diabetes, how do you eat pasta? How do you enjoy it and balance your blood sugars? And so it's got goat cheese and all these veggies um, and it's just delicious. Then we've got some grain-free Parmesan chicken and that's actually, I've got another copy right here. That's the cover star right here. Um, and so really what we do is this is a perfect example of a blood sugar friendly swap. You take out those breadcrumbs and we use almond flour mixed with a little bit of Parmesan cheese to really make this delicious um, dinner lunch option. And then my favorite, chocolate chip cookies, because Ooh. if I have to cut out co chocolate chip cookies, I would be quite sad. Um, <laughs> but these are flourless pecan chocolate chip cookies. And so this is another great example of making a swap, but actually even getting more flavor. So instead of just traditional flour, what we've done here is we grind up a little bit of oats and pecans, and that essentially makes our flour, and it makes these delicious chocolate chip cookies. Oh my gosh, and right about now is when I want a chocolate chip <laughs> cookie here in the studio, and I keep looking, I keep looking, but I can't find any. So the cookbook is gonna be available for pre-order. How can folks get their hands on this book? Yeah, so there will be a link on the Houston Life page where it'll take you to all the different retailers that you can purchase from. It publishes on January 26th, which is next Tuesday, but you can pre-order it now. And if you do, as a thank you, I'm offering 15 bonus recipes that you'll get digitally in an ebook. So that's if you pre-order before Tuesday, um, but that link will be on the Houston Life page right now, probably. That all is right. so awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Appreciate all that. and Looking forward to getting some bites out of this thing for sure. Thank you guys so much for having me. Absolutely, congratulations. Okay, coming up Thank next, you. the must-have cleaning products that promise to help you have a tidier home this year. And Joe Sam is getting to work this afternoon with KPRC2 and Houston Habitat for Humanity Home Build. Don't go anywhere. Houston Life is back after the break. The constant catch up of 2020 is over, and now we can look forward to a more organized 2021. Erin Chase, the $5 dinner mom, and Alan Clean Fluencer is helping us create an easy cleaning plan to keep our home safe. Great to see you, Erin. Hello from my kitchen. Good to see you. You know, cleaning during a pandemic and beyond is really all about balance. I love this first tip that you're talking about because my husband uh, at the end of December had COVID. And when you're talking about when do you use disinfectant, when do you use all these kinds of products with bleach or water, break it down for us. Right, so I think that, you know, as we lived through the last year, we the pendulum swung, right? Like we feel like we have to disinfect all the things, all the time, just you know, just like you said in your house, and and we've been through that here at our house as well too. And I think the challenge that I want to give to you for 2021 is kind of recreate the balance, if you will. So deciding that we're only going to be disinfecting kind of the high touch areas, right? So doorknobs for your main entryways, your garage door, your front door, light switches, right here is in my in my in my dining room because those are the things that we're touching all the time. Door pulls. How many six people? 10 times a day are grabbing and opening the drawers here in my kitchen. So I wanna make sure to disinfect those high touch areas. And I do that with my uh, DIY uh, disinfectant spray that I make with the Chloralin disinfecting bleach. And that's a great way to save money as well. So I'm all about the balance in using um, and disinfecting only when I need to be disinfecting, but also um, saving money by creating my own spray with the Chloralin disinfecting bleach. I love that tip too. Okay, let's talk about everyday messes, okay? We've got a dog or we've got young kids. I feel like there's always a spill or something happening in my house, like everybody's house. 
Yes, so you need this right here. So this is your cleaning caddy that you wanna stash all over the place. I have these in both of my bathrooms upstairs, underneath my kitchen sink, and then I have one in the garage that I use for the car, the garage, the laundry room, right? So making this efficient, making cleaning efficient is my other, other challenge for you in 2021. And having the caddy loaded with my affordable natural favorite products like Art of Green, I have spray and wipes in each one of the caddies and it does just that. It helps you to clean up the, the quick messes, right? Like you can quickly wipe up the the toothpaste gunk, right? That mm -hmm. gets that falls out of your toothpaste when you're brushing your teeth. Like those are the quick cleanups. Because if you forget to do that right away or you, you know, get sidetracked or something, what happens later down the road is you just end up with this really kind of past the point of no return mess, <laughs> if you will. And then this cleaning just gets to be kind of like, Bleh, right? And so if you have these here and stashed where you need them, for those quick cleanups, but also for your deep cleaning sessions. I also have dusters and reusable cloths and sponges and scrubbers in them so that everything that I, I'm not crisscrossing the house when I need to go and clean the shower, right? Everything that I need is right here in my caddy right where I need it. And I love that you're recommending these products that are naturally derived, um, non-toxic, the art of green products. Where can we find those? You can get Art of Green at any HEB near you. You can also find it at target.com. Save some money, get an all natural, great non-toxic cleaner that is safe to use in your home and around your kids and your pets. I love it. Erin, I almost feel like you saw a crystal ball into my house with that toothpaste gunk on my <laughs> toothpaste there. I was dealing with it just this morning. So I'm definitely gonna pick up the Art of Green. It's always great to see you. Thanks so much. Good to and see you. Thank you. For more information, just visit allenusa.com. And now let's check in with Jonathan to see what's coming up next. I was over here taking notes on the cleaning habit. I know, good, Not right? Toothpaste gunk <laughs> as well. Thanks a lot for that, Courtney. Houston Habitat for Humanity's goal is to build or improve a place that people can call home. And it is the eighth year that KPRC2 has joined forces to help a local family move into their forever home. Joe Sam is out there right now with more information on this fantastic organization. Joe, how's it looking out there? I mean, it's looking great, Jonathan. And as you can already imagine, from the first day that this kicked off just last week when the KPRC2 team was helping out with just those walls that we saw, now those walls have been put up. The mini walls that were built, you see the foundation laid, windows have been installed, but there's a lot of work still happening out here today and helping to make that work happen. It's Carpet Giant, and I'm speaking right now with, uh, with uh, them right now, talking all about that, Miss Meredith. This has been an incredible work in progress here, and you guys have been putting a lot of work in here. Talk about what you've been doing so far. Yes, we've been out here since noon today and we have been helping install the soffit. I don't know if you know what that is because I sure did. It, <laughs> it is along the perimeter of the house that you see where those little bitty vents are. So we actually almost finished the whole side of the house and now we're just on the last part. Yeah, and it's really, really great to see all of the volunteers that have been out here. This is the eighth day that we've been out here really working hard to make this happen for Miss Alma Armendariz. And what was, what has been great is that she's a single hardworking mother with two children really putting in the work and we want to remind people that this is not a giveaway this is something that they're making sure that you have to earn it so she's been putting in the hard work helping out with the build as well and how does that make you feel working with, with them as well making sure that this happens it is wonderful this is about our fourth or fifth year to be doing this and it is such a great experience I believe she was out here yesterday yeah. helping so we haven't had gotten the chance to meet her her children personally but through years past I mean the the work they put in and then to see the smiles on their faces mm -hmm. when it's done it just makes it worth it it really does make it worth it and what we say is that when you come inside the home she's moving from out of a one bedroom home with her family into a three bed two bath home and seeing all of that progress that has been made isn't that wonderful and how quickly they're getting this done yes i mean it, it, it's all volunteer and to know that you just had a small hand yes. in making this possible and changing the course of this family's life is just incredible. Absolutely, Meredith, this has been really great to see your team here, really working hard. Like you said, they've been here since noon. They're gonna put in a couple of more minutes, hours of work so that we can get this all done here. And I've been really, really enjoying seeing all of the work that you guys have been doing. I'm not sure if I'm gonna take off the coat and, <laughs> and, and pick up a hammer, but I should, right? That's I right. absolutely should. We're gonna be giving you more information about what we're doing here with the Houston Habitat for Humanity. But like we said, Jonathan, Courtney, absolutely amazing work that they've been putting in here for all of those volunteers helping Alma out there. It is such a great job, absolutely. Thanks so much, Joe. Now let's check back in with Lauren for a look at what she has coming up. Hey guys, 
I know you know that guy, and I know you know the other guy, too. We're here downtown at Dunder Muffin. We're going to check out what's on their world's best boss drink menu when we come right back. Houston Life will be back. Don't move. desk might look familiar because it does belong to that guy right over there. That guy, Dwight, he's part of the office, but we're part of the office in downtown Houston. We've got our own branch. This is Dunder Mupplin. Dwight's desk, and that guy is his boss who's always staring at him. Michael always got his eyes on us, and i got to walk over and show you more on, about this pop-up that's in downtown 7-Eleven, Maine until January 30th, so the end of the month. Asha Holloway, the Hi. creator of the pop-up, she's brought us so many other great ideas. Now, not not only is this a great place to have some drinks for some photo ops, which you can do all of that, but you can also get some of this office-inspired food. Yes, 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 yes. So you, what is on this table? <laughs> well, you know we couldn't do Dunder Muffling without Kevin's famous chili. Absolutely. Uh, yes, so it's absolutely amazing. We do have our regular beef option, and for all of our vegan lovers, we have vegan chili available as well. Wonderful. So amazing. We also have our pot pie that we have. We have our chicken sandwich alongside with our salmon and mashed potatoes. Oh, I see the asparagus yes. and the healthy menu item. Yes. Okay, that's awesome. Our shrimp and grits, our amazing bratwurst, and our fettuccine Whoa, and Wow, what a yes. different, entirely different plethora of, of items on that. Now, yes. to wash this down, I couldn't not ask about the drinks, and these are some of our favorite beverages yes. here. And I see they are right next to the Dundies, which yes. you can get for yourself. Hi there. Yes. So, What's on the drink menu? So we have our Dundee drink that um, Aaron's getting ready to make right now. So the Dundee is with Jack Daniels, sweet and sour, Sprite and edible glitter. It's absolutely amazing. Oh, the edible glitter. Yes. So, you know I love that. <laughs> yes. Actually, the Dundee is one of our most popular drinks that okay. we have, and people absolutely love it. Now, I do want to mention, Asha, a lot of people always ask me about these pop-ups. It's a ticketed event. You have to purchase a ticket ahead yes. of time. They're complying with all the COVID health and safety guidelines. Yes. The mask must stay on. So yes. where can people get their tickets? Yes, if people visit dundermuplin.com or visit us on Instagram at plethora, P-L-E-T-H-O, R-A-N-T-X. <laughs> okay. Um, they can go ahead and stay connected with all the upcoming pop-ups pop that we have alongside what can purchase tickets. And I also want to ask, I know this one will be here through the end of the month, but do you have something else lined up for the rest of the year? Oh, yeah. So for all of our Mardi Gras lovers. Oh! Okay, you don't have to say nothing else. Dunder Mufflin downtown. Asha Holloway, you're the creator. Thank you so much for having us yes. out here. She's going to pour us that drink. I'm going to take my Dundee. If you guys want more info, it is at HoustonLife.tv. Derek, uh, I'm sorry, Jonathan in for Derek today. And Courtney, I will take a sip of this beautiful, glittery-inspired uh, Dunder Mufflin beverage for you guys. Oy. Cheers and happy Friday. You can deliver yeah. as well, right? you got to come back to the studio eventually. <laughs> very, very true. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that, Lauren. Thanks, I've got plans this weekend, it looks like, man. It looks like so, so much fun. fun. Yeah. Cheers, friend. Okay, guys, after the break, a look at what's coming up on Monday's show, including one local teen who is helping others volunteer in the community. And as we head to break, let's go ahead and check in with Kevin Frazier for a look at what's coming up on Entertainment Tonight. Hey, Kevin. Courtney and Jonathan tonight on E.T. We're with Olivia Newton-John sounding off on the Grease controversy and our Donnie Wahlberg exclusive that really will inspire you. Don't miss it. That's tonight at 6.30 right here on KPRC 2. Now, stay put. Houston Life will be right back. Okay, coming up on Monday's show, meet a local high schooler who started her own nonprofit to help others find volunteer opportunities in the community. Plus, a coupon guru shares her secrets to help you save big on groceries. We like to save around here. I love here. clipping a good coupon. Yeah, you know, seriously, good. these days. Okay, so earlier we asked you to share your worst decision that you've ever made out of sheer boredom, <laughs> and here's what you had to say. Amanda says eating all the food. I'm with you. Oh, Amanda, I know. You know what? Here's the thing. I have eaten an entire thing of Oreos, and uh, I'm okay true. with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Robin says she made DIY lipstick and ended up with a oh. glob of toxic <laughs> waste. That's no good. No good. And Laura 
Laura says Amazon. Oh. Yes. And you know what? Did she put the, the wine or something in the back? That yeah. is me. In the morning when I wake up after a late night, possibly with an adult beverage or two. Right. I wake up and I'm like, wait, I put it in the shopping cart, but did I, I purchase? And then I look and I'm like, oh. You sure did. Derek did bought it. a guitar once on what? Amazon. Oh my God. Never played it. I know. It's a love-hate relationship, right? <laughs> well, listen, I love that you are here yeah, today, Jonathan Martinez. Fun. It was great to get to know you. It. And please come back. I will. After the first go-round, we're going to be back for more for sure. That sounds it. great. That's yeah. so awesome. We appreciate you filling in for Derek today. And thanks so much for joining us on this Friday. We're going to do it all again on Monday. Now we're going to head it over to Keith and Christine for the news at 4. Have a great weekend, guys.